Howdy. Hi, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you had a nice little break, got refreshed, uh, checked out our partners, started on that scavenger hunt. I'm going to plug that scavenger hunt, $700. Go get that money. Uh, please join me now in welcoming our next speaker, the first speaker of um, this part of the day, uh, Xi Liang. Uh, she is a data science lead at Endeavor Group and has more than eight years experience in advanced analytics and software engineering. She's responsible for establishing data science capabilities, um, has led advanced analytics projects around the world and has enabled double digit multi-million dollar incremental sales through AI and machine learning. And uh, she will be discussing AI powered personalized email marketing. So um, welcome and, and thank you. And please take it away. Thanks, Chris. Um, it is really a pleasure to share with you our journey in building AI uh, driven uh, personalized email marketing. I am data science lead at Endeavor Drinks. I joined the company about 11 months ago. Um, so we built, I built our data science team from uh, scratch. Now I'm ready to show um, our main investment the last uh, 11 months on AI enabled personalized email marketing. Um, I just uh, uh, want to introduce our uh, company. Um, so Endeavor Group is relatively new. Uh, we recently demerged from uh, Uwas. Uh, if you're in Australia, you probably would know uh, Woolworths is one of the biggest uh, retailers in Australia, where um, for Endeavor Group, we have, um, we have uh, uh, Dan Murphy's and BWS is one of the uh, largest retail, uh, liquor retailers. Um, although we are pretty new startup, but uh, we are larger than a major airline company Qantas in Australia. So we are a 15 billion revenue company. Uh, right now, uh, we are establishing our new data science and advanced analytics capability. Uh, in this session, what I'm going through is to go through, share with you our journey to use AI um, to build a personalized uh, engine that entirely transformed the way how we do email marketing. So right now, we basically do not send any manual marketing uh, in communication anymore. Everything is entirely organized by uh, engine and machine. So uh, for today, uh, what I'm going to talk about are four things. So what are, what are the problems that we are solving? Um, what is uh, personalized marketing? Uh, we solve four problems. Who do we send email to? What time? When to send? And what email to use uh, with what products? How frequent a, a week. So what are the problems we're solving? Then I will talk about how we use AI um, to drive the personalized marketing. Uh, what are the learnings we have uh, had in the process? Then I will talk about how what our AI solution look like and how API play a role um, in the whole uh, um, in the whole uh, journey. Uh, it has been a bumpy road. Um, High level, we have a combination of a different AI solutions uh, putting together become a, a, a centralized engine that power the entire personalization. Email is the first application we have. Then in the end, I will talk about the challenge that we, we have um, gone through so far uh, and some of the plan we want to change in terms of API um, and uh, how do we solve them. Um, yeah, I'm going to start with the first one. So what are the problems that we're solving? Uh, first, personalized email marketing. Uh, personalization usually referred to uh, you, everyone have the different email um, just to customize for them. So you either you have a better experience engaging with the uh, with us or you, you know, you get what you want to see, or we kind of communicate with with you in a more targeted way. There are four things that we, 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 we look at. So what's the theme of the email? Uh, the theme of email could mean, um, this email is about why don't you try something new? Or another one relevance email could be buy the same product again. Um, so the, the, we have a probably 2000 different uh, type of emails that we send. So across those email, as you can imagine, our engine will find out which um, which theme 
the, the email is about. And the second one is what product should be in the email. And we have about 30,000 different products. And so you can see, well, after we have chosen one of the 2,000 different email thing, we have to find out which product we should be putting in there. We have another engine just to find out what are the product people want to see in this email. Um, then we decide whom to send the email. And also this is a massive task as well. We have probably more than 5 million customers. Um, and then this computation, the, uh, the serving of the model also quite computationally expensive uh, and also itself is expensive as well. The last one is when to send the email. So different people will have a different preference when they open um, their, where they open their laptop, when they read, uh, whether they read on uh, the iPad. So those are factors that we need to consider when we think about when to send the email. Okay, let's solve the problem uh, one by one. The first one that uh, we look at is what product should we show to whom? Uh, this is the product recommendation that we build. So this is service, what it does is for all the 5 million customers, we look at across all these 30 different, 30,000 different uh, product. What is the li likelihood that you're going to buy the product you have purchased before? As you can imagine, uh, if you look at the permutation of 5 million and 30,000 different products, a huge com computation. But for, for machine learning, for our model service, it's a relatively straightforward. We just use the XGBoost model. You don't have to remember this. But basically, it's a predictive model that try to estimate the likelihood someone is going to buy each of the individual products that they have purchased before. The data we fit in are past purchase uh, sales history and the demographics of, uh, and some customer information and about this product as well. So as a result, this service provides us a rank of likelihood of purchase. So if you want to, um, you know, if one of email want to say, I want to find five products to put in this email, then you just look at the score list of how likely people are going to buy the product that they have purchased before. You just pick top five. Obviously, people are more likely to buy the product based on your prediction. Uh, so this is the probably the easiest problem that uh, we, we, we solve. Then the second one, which is a lot more challenging, is uh, how likely you're going to buy a product that you have not purchased before. So in the last page, uh, on average, a customer probably probably no more than about uh, 100 different type of uh, products uh, through their whole journey with, with Dan Murphy or BWS. Now, if we're thinking about people, the product that they have not purchased before, uh, to explore something new, it is extremely complicated for the machine learning or AI solution to uh, figure out what's your preference. We have uh, several ways to understand how people can make a choice. And obviously, um, in liquor world, it is really hard for someone to make it to try something that they have never tried before compared to something they have always bought in the past. We look at four different things um, uh, when we train our model to learn the pattern, try to estimate how likely people are going to buy us. We look at their past purchase. Uh, we look at it, how they uh, respond to marketing, whether they open certain email with this product, whether they click it, and when they navigate it to internet, do they search for the keyword uh, of this category. For example, if I search for um, uh, VB, which is Australian uh, beer, then I would understand that this customer want to buy a beer. Then when we look for a ranking of the score, the beer product will be a lot higher than other um, product. Then the next one is the product attribute. This one uh, will help the model to understand um, the similarity between this new product to the product that they have purchased before. So obviously, the, 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 the more similar it is to the previous product, the more likely people are going to buy it. So um, we feed all those data to Attribust. Then we pack them as a um, as a service to provide information on 
um, the likelihood of people buy a product they have not purchased before. So if some someone if a consumer requests the uh, model to answer, this is uh, we have this customer, then return the likelihood of this product, then we'll be able to provide that information. Um, a five million customer with pro probably around two thousand twenty thousand to twenty five thousand different results. So it's a huge amount of data. Um, then the next one is the extremely complicated one. So we have 2,000 different types of emails. And those type of email are primarily uh, for five uh, major category. The first one is uh, relevance email. And those kind of email is talk about um, what uh, the, 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 the product we have purchased before. So this is a kind of different variation of the relevance email, for example. How about buy the same whiskey you have bought before? Uh, how about buy the Penfold, which is a famous um, Australian wine brand? So we have a different variations of relevance. We also have another one called a discovery email that has a different variations of discovering new things. It could be North America whiskey. It could be a particular uh, small vendor that only have a very niche product. And we also look at the product attribute and also the email attribute. So we want to learn from the past what email people click and buy the product in the email. So we kind of can learn that pattern and send them. The algorithm or the service that we use is called a multi-arm bandit. So after we train this model, we will be able to uh, serve the likelihood of the people buy uh, a click of product. Later, um, we'll have another model to predict the likelihood, not only they click this um, email product, they also buy the product as well. So um, this one probably is the hardest one we can we have. That's also um, set to the foundation, how the whole engine acts um, uh, nicely linked together. So the steps look like, first, we uh, decide the theme of the email. And then second is after uh, we have the email theme, we find the corresponding product inside. And then that kind of give us a high level um, content about this customer. Then uh, the next question that we need to answer is, how uh, one should we send the email um, and uh, how frequent we should send them to. At the moment, we haven't really get a, a kind of smart solution in terms of how, how many times we should send to them. Uh, obviously, if you send too few, you are not optimizing for business outcome in terms of people click the email and then buy the product. And um, if you send too many, People might feel really spammed. They might unsubscribe. So we permanently lose the communication um, with customer. So the, the way how we, uh, uh, how we are doing now is randomly select between three to five emails. And then we randomly send to them. Um, in terms of the time, we have uh, 21 different time bands. Um, Monday to um, or Wednesday uh, to uh, Sunday. So every we have three time band of the day. Uh, unfortunately, now because we don't have the intelligence to figure out which are the best time band to send, whether it's morning, it's afternoon, it's in the evening, then we just pretty much random select. Uh, we decide whether it is one of the, we we'll send three, then we randomly decide which time band it, 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 it we are going to send to. So right now, um, the team, we are working on build a model to decide the optimal band. So as you can imagine, uh, depend on the time of day, people actually want to look at a different type of email. So what we have found so far is at the end of the day, people are more likely to try new things where in the morning is not the case. And in the morning, people are more kind of open to buy the same product and in the evening, and they kind of more open to discovery type of a product. Then that gave us some suggestion on people probably more open to a new um, type of email. So we adjust uh, the time stand for that particular email. So that's another layer of complexity. So we haven't really figured out a good way to serve that model. Um, so we still use it randomly um, at the moment. Now, those are the three main components uh, in the, our personalization. Uh, the first one is the action incubator. 
the the way how uh, we structure our content and email is we put them in a um, in Airtable. So this will kind of put all of content we have. For example, in the email uh, case, uh, we have about two thousand different type of email theme. We look at okay, this email is about discovery. Is about this tone. For example, it can be funny, it can be serious, it can be educational, and we have probably um, about fifty different dimensions to talk about this email. Uh, whether it is a member offer, uh, whether there's any particular season, um, then we also have look at uh, other application like website and app uh, banners as well. So those are become the input of our engine now. All those input uh, feed into the engine. We also extract all the relevant data as well. Um, so the engine itself will learn on a weekly basis uh, what people has received uh, in the past one year, and then really digest those information, and then build as a, a service. So um, anyone can query the um, the, uh, the 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 model, and then get the response in terms of how likely people are going to click. Uh, one email. Once we have those results, those get sent to different uh, channels. Right now, the main focus we have is email. We also look at the app and the website as well. So, I think so far, uh, I think we probably have sent um, more than one hundred million personalized emails uh, so far, and uh, I believe the. Annual incremental sales bring by the engine is more than double digit million dollar Australian dollar incremental sell. So it has been um, um, quite uh, attractive to invest a uh, con continuous uh, invest resource to enhance our personalization engine. Um, give you one example on uh, different variations people can see. Um, for example, um, this this is a relevance um, email. If it is great, why change it? And uh, so this is talk about uh, uh, this theme is about relevance email. Then uh, we will find out which product it is. Then for another customer, we this is kind of a new product. It talk about, okay, why don't you try something new? Then uh, we have a different tone to adjust the the way how we deliver the message. As we kind of learn a little bit more about the customer, we kind of fine tune the, uh, the the tone and the way we communicate um, with with uh, customer, and eventually uh, we settle down to you know this customer is really keen to explore new things. Then we kind of shift from um, these templates to the more we learn about them, the more we kind of adjust to the finalized version. This customer really like. Uh, simple, um, very straightforward message. So the eventually the message this customer will uh, receive um, will be drink discovery simplified. Uh, so this is the way we have we structure our message. Um, now this is one example um, that we uh, just compare what the personalization has changed. Um, out the way how we run our uh, uh, marketing. In the past, uh, the way how we run marketing is we have a calendar, um, and this tell us okay in this month we have five different campaign to run. Um, then the campaign is different type of theme of advertisement and email communication. Um, the we plan, we select, okay, there are about 1 million customer we think should receive this type of email. For example, we send out a member offer, then uh, everyone will receive the same thing. For example, in this example, we have a premium uh, whiskey lover. If you look at in the past, what he received is um, uh, you have a member offer, then Obviously, he only receive a beer product where he is actually purchased a lot of whiskey. Um, so this obviously does not really drive sell or pleasant experience. So because we are sending them not relevant product, they not really click it. They do not buy it. So um, it's not very quality email we send. After we have the personalization engine, so what do we do there? is to make sure we understand the customer. 
So we send whiskey related email um, and then we find the right product that they're more likely to buy. So instead of having really cheap whiskey, we have a, a lot, you know, premium cost, uh, whiskey to them. So not only they receive some member benefits, they have more customized and relevant email sent to them. Um, okay, so now those are kind of business side that we have. Now, what I'm going through here is to talk about some technical details. Um, this is something we have a uh, we, we actually discuss quite a lot when we design the engine. Uh, it's a cold start or warm start. The cold start means we assume no knowledge about those customers, even we have a lot of trans. I think just um, some technical issues, hopefully briefly. Um, so I'll hold on for a few minutes and see if uh, we can get he back to us. Um, but in the meantime, I'll just chat a bit about the API days. Don't forget to check out um, all of our, our partners. And don't forget to check out the, uh, the treasure hunt. If you're like me, we've hit Wednesday. You need something to perk you up. What's more perky than a treasure hunt? What's more perky than $700? Both can be found um, on the API Days website in our, in our treasure hunt. Um, so yeah, um, let's give she a bit longer and see if she can uh, come back to us. But- um, I think- Oh, you're back. I, I, I didn't even realize that I, my internet had the issue. I'm not oh. sure when you, when you lost me. <laughs> we we just lost you at the start of um, the warm start versus the cold start, the runner versus the jumbo. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, I guess the cold start. Okay, I, I hopefully I can pick it. Am I still sharing my screen? No, no. You just need to start sharing screen again, okay. and then yeah. Okay, sorry, I Bye. didn't realize. <laughs> That's all good. Um, so for the cold start, the benefit of a cold start is we do not assume what we know about a customer before is totally valid. We just start over again. We randomly send to them everything. And then we hopefully we can learn from the you know, patterns. Slowly, we start to learn from them. But we, the business cannot wait to see the business outcome. So we choose to have the warm um, uh, start as the final result. So we assume we already know them and then based on their um, previous purchase pattern and then send the first batch. So the dis disadvantage obviously is we, it, we didn't have the opportunity to learn the thing that we didn't know um, before. Uh, then uh, I guess this one, um, the one thing that in personalization that is challenging is to have a balance between the exploration and exploitation. Exploration is, although now we kind of think we know a lot about this customer, we cannot just send them the product that we know they are going to buy for sure, because they are going to see the same uh, product, the same email over and over again. So we bring some randomness as well, so for them to explore. Um, so we try the machine, the model will try to have a balance between the exploration and the experimentation so we can get most of the, um, serving them the most relevant thing and at the same time learning new things. So now the way how we uh, package the, 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 the whole engine, we are considering the following architecture. This is something we haven't really done. The, the current structure, it is patch. So this is the current architecture we are exploring um, to have. And we have some success in a smaller recommendation engine we are now uh, ready to test out whether this can work for the whole engine now. Uh, in what we have is uh, the, all the data gets sent to RPG and the RPG will distribute all those uh, traffic um, for different retailers. We have Dan Murphy and BWS 
and then it's sent to an engine uh, orchestration layer to make sure we have the right uh, data load, uh, and then it's sent to the right queue so they can patch them up. So because we have a lot of data, so they send chunk by chunk, and we put them into queue and a callback queue as well. Then we have the app engine to build the model to make prediction for each of the payload that is sent over. Then we put into a big query of the final results. Then uh, the, the callback queue will retrieve all those information and send back to um, the system. Um, so uh, I guess I'm probably running out of time. Let me just quickly finish the last page. Um, so. Obviously, we have very good uh, cutting edge AI solution, uh, but um, model can only learn as much as they can. There are still a lot of business problem it cannot answer. For example, are we sending too many emails that people start on subscribe? Are we sending the same email over and over again? So we need some level of exploration and changes. And how can we make sure the customer have a good journey, not as you know they receive the relevant email now, uh, but if we kind of forget the long term nurturing of exploring new things and uh, are we kind of treat a different cohort differently. So those are the kind of challenges that we have to solve, uh, which we haven't really solved now yet. Uh, in terms of next step, we are going to kind of personalize the landing page, search result, personalize the offer, and uh, making sure they have a personalized journey as well. So um, this is about our custom um, uh, personalized journey, a uh, personalized journey for email. Um, hopefully that can give you some idea about how we uh, use UI to empower our um, uh, personalization and encapsulate that service and uh, distribute to the right, um, right places. Um, thanks everyone. And I'm keen to take some questions. Cool, thank you very much. I am. Uh... I'm both uh, terrified at the prospect of how much money I'll be spending on, on these personalized offers, but uh, also looking forward to receiving emails that actually are about products I'm interested in. So that's pretty attractive. Um, I've got uh, a couple of questions. Um, first one, uh, right at the end there, you, you mentioned um, but the AI, there are some areas where it, it does struggle. You mentioned like the scheduling of the emails. Um, and at the end, you mentioned a few points where the AI currently struggles. Um, with the way it's developing, can you envision that in future, the AI will be able to handle these problems? Is it is it gaining capabilities like that as you move forwards? I think, I think it can. Uh, the, the way how AI can learn those things is by uh, is, is to prepare the right information for them. So I, I certainly think uh, if we know the problem and have a clear definition how to solve it, and then the AI will be able to pick it. What we cannot solve is we cannot clearly articulate and define the problem. This is a problem we cannot solve. But if we can kind of break down this into smaller pieces, AI will be able to pick it up. And we have shown uh, many successes. Initially, we didn't really have something to pick up red product. And once we kind of know what exactly solution that we're looking for, basically we're looking like the likelihood of people purchase product, then that becomes solved. And if we don't if we don't know whether we are going to be able to give customer a pleasant journey, as long as we can clearly articulate, you know, what is the pleasant journey look like, then the AI will be able to produce that pleasant journey, but provided you have a good definition on what is a pleasant journey. Okay, um, interesting. And um, I think we only have time for just one more a quick question. Um, so I've got, um, with the data that the AI has to work with now, uh, can you introduce new product categories um, or introduce it to new industries where the AI might not have experience, but it can use existing data to influence those choices? Or is that something that it sort of needs to build over time? I think those probably need to be built over time, but I wouldn't really start with a full on, you know, personalization AI solution for kind of personalization uh, because there are a lot of investment in terms of building the model. I probably would start with a rule based. For example, if you hmm. uh, purchased um, wine in the last one month or so, then I would already know you like wine more than beer then I would just push uh, wine product to you. 
to start to build those process pipelines, making sure you know all the pieces of plumbing all to working together, and then set up those business case that leadership created by in. Then you start to introduce more and more of AI elements to keep the momentum going. Eventually, you can probably build something like us. It's all fully automated, AI empowered uh, solution. I would say small step rule based, and then all the way to AI solution. Okay, awesome. Thank you. I'm afraid uh, that's all the, the time we have for the questions um, uh, because of the, the schedule, but thank you very much. I found that um, interesting, exciting. Yeah. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thanks.